Hey, I'm Victor Marjana. This is the Community Show. So happy to have Joe Brady on the show. And this is what this show is all about. Family, community, uh, tradition, all the things that make up the, uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Peekskill that he actually founded a couple of years ago and uh, still helping out today. So we have so much to talk about. Joe, thanks so much for coming out. Victor, I'm delighted to be here. I'm glad you asked. Oh, this Gonna is have great. Fun. Yep. Um, I can't help but ask about your family first. So how's the, the girls? Oh, my five girls are doing great. Thank you for all five of them. My, my wife, of course, Anne, is doing super. Um, without her, of course, I wouldn't be involved in any of this stuff. So I have a, a tremendous support for Anne. And my four daughters are all doing great, you know, and uh, St. Patrick's Day is a very special event it's more than just a day. It's a, it's a month-long event in my house that my girls, no matter where they are in the world, seem to show up in Peekskill and New York City. But uh, um, we just love having them around, and the support is uh, just great. Awesome. It is. I know. You can't call it St. Patrick's Day. It's more like St. Patrick's Month. Yes, so. at least. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these places have to schedule their parade for different days. Oh, they do. Yeah. First of all, there's the big parade in New York City, so nobody really can, in, within 100 miles, can have the same day that. as they would, and that would be during the week most of the time anyway. But otherwise, weekends before, weekends after is when the communities, because they're all, they're all going for the same bands. Yeah, and, that's yeah, the other and, thing, yeah, right. Yeah, and that's, uh, bands are that's such an integral part of a parade, so, you know, which is one reason why we started our parade on a Thursday night. Okay. Let's talk about the dates right away. Yeah, this sure. way we okay. don't. So when is the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Peekskill? Okay, the, the Peekskill Parade is going to be on Saturday, March 9th. Okay. Okay, the, the Saturday before the, the big parade in the city. Mm -hmm. And it'll start, first we have a mass at 1.30 at Assumption Church. Um, hope it's going to be celebrated once again by our uh, chaplain, Father Jim Gardner, uh, who just recently had some health issues, but I'm hoping he'll, he'll be able to make it. Okay. And then the parade kicks off 3 o'clock sharp uh, right at the... Uh, Top part of North Division Street. Right. Are you having a, uh, a breakfast or a brunch? Yeah, beforehand? there's going to be something going on at the Elks Club beforehand. Okay, yeah, which uh, um, we'll be able to gather, have something you know, something good to eat, and then uh, um, between the parade, not not a lot of time. I'm sorry, between the mass and the parade, we'll have a small reception downstairs where the I Hudson Valley Irish Fest has their gathering room. Yep. Um, so we'll be able to uh, socialize a little bit and get primed for the parade. Excellent. Yeah, awesome. looking forward to it. Now, is it the same route every year? Or? The route, pretty much so. The route has changed minimally okay. uh, because of where we want to start in one spot, and then we recently incorporated doing something in front of D Dr. McGurdy Sr.'s old office, uh, and then it's predicated also on where Cablevision can set up and where the grandstand is. But the, for all intents and purposes, the parade is downtown Peekskill, uh, Division Street, yeah. across Main, up Broad, and it kind of ends there. It's... Uh, um, one of the few parades, I was integral in designing the route, and I wanted to make sure the end point was rather close to the starting point, because right. in my experience, <laughs> so many parades, you start here, you go there, and they can't get from there back to here. <laughs> so it's great, and not only that, but we start, we just start at the Elks Club. Um, it's great that we yeah. start in church, yeah. and we ended up at a bar in the Elks Club. Yeah. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Very. Who's the Grand Marshal this year? Uh, this year's Grand Marshal is somebody most people might know, <laughs> our former governor, George Pataki. All right. Yeah, so we're delighted to have uh, George on board for this. Uh, of course, you know, George has got pretty strong Irish blood, He's, besides <laughs> his Hungarian blood. His mother was from Ireland. Uh, his mother was actually uh, an aide when Ann and I were Grand Marshals back in two, 2000. Oh, great. Yeah, so uh, we're absolutely thrilled to have uh, uh, George as a Grand Marshal. He's I actually think he's been in the restaurant a few times this past couple of months. So, George, good to see you. It's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be great. That's exciting. How do you pick one? How do you pick the uh, um, Grand Marshal? We have a very vibrant committee, yeah. uh, a lot of volunteers, and there's, there's certain qualifications actually to be able to vote. You just need to attend meetings, you need to support it somehow. And then we get together. Uh, I guess sometime in the August, September time frame, right, right yeah, after the holidays, yeah. and uh, throw a bunch of names out, and there's a uh, uh, little discussion, and then it's, it's a vote. And I got to tell you, all the years we're doing this, which is 33 years, uh, sometimes you think you're going to run out of names, but there's no shortage of names. Wow. When you go to look for people that yeah. uh, are involved, contribute, that maybe should be recognized, um, we've been f absolutely... You know, thrilled to have the I names know. there, so great, it's it's a it's a voting people. thing, and yeah. I've never heard I've never heard anything really negative. Yeah. If somebody didn't get in um, f for whatever reason by a vote or two, the the attitude typically is, 
maybe next, next year. year. That's next all. year. That's it. So the attitude is great, and uh, um, it, it seems to have worked. We've had some great grand marshals over the years, yeah. uh, and some always great aides. Yeah. And I would like to I would like to mention the A's. I yeah, think let's about do so you anticipated yeah, that. Let me see if I get them. I get them. <laughs> I'm supposed to get them in alphabetical order. Well, we have um, uh, recently retired officer Pam. See, it's not going to be in order. Okay. First one should be Richie Jackson. <laughs> Richard Jackson was a, a classmate of uh, uh, George Pataki's. Okay, um, former mayor of Peekskill. Yeah. He's going to be an aide, and it's going to be great to see him right. because he's, he's always fun to be around. Um, recently retired. Um, well, he is recently retired. Pete Peterson from the school district. Yep. Always a gun ho guy. <laughs> Um, nothing but fun when when Pete's when Pete's around. Yeah. Uh, recently retired police officer, Officer Pam. Everybody knows Pam yes. Shro. Yes. Yeah. So she's going to be on board. And last but not least uh, is Father Vernon. Wow. He'll be one of the aides. So uh, right. we've got quite an assortment. Yeah. He uh, plays golf, you know. Yes, I know. I understand he's quite good. I haven't yeah. had a chance to golf with him, but yeah. maybe someday. Yeah. I hope. Well, hopefully we'll get together this yeah, summer. I could certainly so. use some of his prayers for my golf game as it is right now. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, when is the installation dinner? I guess it's early this year. It, it is, uh, and it, mostly because of uh, Governor Pataki's schedule. It's mm -hmm. going to be this Saturday, which is the 10th. Uh, it's going to be at the Abbey. It's not going to be an installation dinner so much. It's uh, going to be reception okay. uh, from 3 until 6. But we'll have a chance to uh, uh, do all the, you know, the necessary installation yeah. ceremonies part awesome. to make it official. Okay. Yes. Now, you've been playing bagpipes for how long? 61 years, I guess you could say, Jeez. technically. I started when I was seven. Wow. Though admittedly, I didn't do much between seven and nine. As a matter of fact, I, I was born <coughs> and raised in the Bronx. And I lived on the sixth floor in Parkchester, and my father was making me practice at seven. I didn't <laughs> like that. And then we used this little instrument called the practice chant at the Learn On. Okay. And I threw it out the window because I didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, then uh, for my ninth birthday, I asked to have that as a Christmas uh, birthday present. Right. And that was my birthday present, and I never stopped. And you know the old saying? Um, my father learned a lot between the time I was seven and nine, you know, and I asked for it back for my ninth birthday and I kept going and haven't stopped since. Wow. Well, I started working here when I was eight. There so, you go. Okay. And I'm here my goodness. 50 years. <laughs> Lord, that's, that's something. <laughs> I to, know. to do anything that long, you need to love it. Oh, yeah. Um, because otherwise you're not going to be good at it. No. So uh, I, I, I probably like love bagpiping as much as you love cooking and entertaining. I do. I love it. Because you're an entertainer su supreme. <laughs> So talk about your dad real quick. He was okay. uh, played a lot of instruments. Well, right? my father played a lot of instruments. I had a very special father. He was he was quite a character, a good guy. Um, I a lot of times uh, didn't want to be in the same room he was in because he was he was larger than life. He'd almost be embarrassing me because I was his son, you know. So uh, uh, but he was he was always a lot of fun. He did play a lot of instruments, um, and uh, uh, I was said before that. There's some jacks of all trades, master yeah. of none. He was yeah. a jack of all trades, but he's a master of the bagpipes, that's for yeah. sure. Very engaging personality, and uh, uh, a lot of people went to him for lessons. And I've heard, especially since he passed, a lot of stories that I think they were going to for lessons, maybe as much for the stories as, as to, to learn how to play yeah. bagpipes. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. he's a great storyteller. And uh, our friend that passed, Scott Matei, loved yeah. your father. My, Scott Matei loved my father, and I was so happy that, 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 to be able to... Um, hand over some of my father's whistles and yeah. some other stuff. And, uh, That's right, Scott's, he brought one of them when, when, when we he did, did the show. show. Yes, yeah. right. Scott was a very talented guy, gone way too young. Yeah. That was a shock I for know. all of us. It was too much. Yeah, I and uh, yeah. And he did a lot for the parade, too. He did a lot for the parade, as did our other friend, Tim Murphy, who died in the same mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Um, so I know that uh, for this year's journal, for this whole season, <clears throat> we're going to be thinking of both Tim and Scott, yeah. uh, integral in people. That's a, a big loss for us. I know. So you had to retire from the New York uh, City. Yeah, Victor, the only thing I stopped doing was leading the parade. Okay. Uh, it just became too physically demanding to, to start at the armory, to go to the cathedral. And when I do this, I'm not dressed like this. I'm wearing full military regalia that yeah. weighs like 45 pounds. Um, and I, it's just so physically demanding. And not only that, more importantly, I had a guy lined up to take the spot, a uh, fellow Iono alumnus, much younger, well, very good bagpiper who had pinch hit for me many times when I couldn't be in two places at once for the regiment. Right. So as of last year, he, that was his first year was marching. And I did it for 33 years, so wow. he's only got 32 years to go, and I hope he does <laughs> break the record. So yeah, but I'm still involved with the regiment. 
Uh, in fact, I'll be playing for them Wednesday morning up at oh, Camp God. Smith when they had the Logan Duffy match because it doesn't make sense for Sean to come up from New Jersey. Yeah. So, yeah. again, the only thing I stopped doing was leading the parade, but I'm doing everything else. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I marched in the parade last year. I was honored to be named uh, an aide to the Grand Marshal and such a, a different way to see the parade, uh, not to have to worry about playing and carrying everything. It was a piece of cake, you know. <laughs> and, well, you are a celebrity. But... Um, you know, I've read a little bit about the history of the bagpipes. They mm -hmm. said it goes back as far as ancient Egypt. Oh, and they're, they're, made they're, from dog skins and bones. Yeah, well, there's a biblical reference to a bagpipe. It, it all made sense. It was an instrument of the poor. Um, and we know the Italians, the Greeks had it before. It made its yeah. way to the UK. It was an instrument of the poor. So you take an animal and you use it for all it's worth. Uh, I mean, food-wise, yeah. and then they would use this, the, the, the skin or the stomach as a bag and mm -hmm. use the, the horns to make noise, and they would communicate. And it wasn't until the um, six, late 16, mid to late 1600s where it made its way into the UK, and they recognized it to be, could be used as an instrument of war. Yes. And then they brought it to, to its kind of aristocratic nature, and then they established schools in Scotland to teach it. Um, and that, that's, where, that's how it became what it is today. You know, and, and the interesting piece of history is that as an instrument of, of war, there was a period of time where uh, the Scots outlawed it. I remember that. Yeah, and yeah. as a result, a lot of other bagpipes, little, we call like descendants of the great Highland bagpipe that I play, mm -hmm. uh, came about, like the Ulean pipes, which the Ulean being a Gaelic word for elbow, the Northumbrian pipes, the Outland pipes. Uh, these are all basically um, descendants of the Great Highland bagpipes that can do more because they're more modern. Mm -hmm. So they have, uh, they can produce flats and sharps that, that our bagpipe cannot. Uh, those, those are basically uh, indoor instruments, but you can tell by the instrument I play, it, it, it can carry yeah. and it can send messages, which it has done over the years yeah. in a military sense, sure. Yeah, they said it actually replaced the bugle as a, an yeah, instrument to, um, to lead the... I, yeah, the, I don't know if I go so far as say replace it, because the mm -hmm. bugle still serves an important role, but it, it's, it, it does, for marching, yeah, you don't see, it certainly replaced the bugle for marching units, but mm -hmm. uh, as far as ceremonial stuff, uh, I think they complement each other. Yeah. What is your greatest uh, memory of the, the New York parade? The, uh, great question. Well, you know, I've been asked that question before, and mm -hmm. it's, it, it, I think it is each time at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I, I, I stand in front with the commanding officer of the 69th Regiment, the most decorated regiment in the country, and behind me are a 1,000 soldiers who I'm very proud of. Uh, years ago, of course, they were dominantly Irish, and it's known as the Fighting 69th. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's not as Irish, of course. It's it, you know a lot of the immig immigrants are there, but they maintain all the traditions. But t I get off topic. So at eight o'clock, it's my turn, my time to march them into the cathedral, march onto Fifth Avenue. And as we approach the cathedral, they open these big doors, and you walk into a cathedral that's full of about three thousand people, wow. all of whom know and appreciate what the 69th has done, and they stand and they applaud. And as you march up the aisle yeah. in Grand in St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's, it's, just, it's just an unbelievable feeling. The hair goes up on the neck, it never gets old. <laughs> and that's a great way to start the day. It is. Um, oh uh, you, know, you don't hear or read about that so much, but it's really a truly a, a unique American experience. It really is. What year did you start the Peekskill Parade? <clears throat> the, uh, we got together, Dan Caffrey had called me, Dan and I had a common friend by the name of uh, um, Bill Duffy, who was the, involved with the FDNY pipe band. Uh, and Bill encouraged Dan and I to speak to, to get a parade in Peekskill going. Mm -hmm. That was 1989. So uh, a small group of guys got together, and I, we got together at Hugo's Restaurant, and there was a reason for that. I wanted the meeting at Hugo's Restaurant because I said to Dan, these guys want to have a parade. You have no idea. You can't just you can't get into the major leagues until you go to the minor leagues. The bands are well booked. You're not going to find bands on the Saturday or Sunday before, the Saturday or Sunday after. So... <clears throat> the idea I wanted to present was to have a Thursday night parade, kind of modeled off a lot of the uh, fire department parades, Thursday night parade. Right. Well, Joe, it's March. You never know what's going to happen. Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see, because we'll do a parade Thursday evening and then have a show across the street in the Paramount, which we did from 1990. It was our first parade. By the way, our first Grand Marshal was uh, Dr. John McGurdy Sr., uh, and we had a show in the Paramount headlined by Mary O'Dowd and the Klan. Um, I had no idea what was going to happen with this parade. All I know is um, 
I got down to the starting line. I couldn't I couldn't see Division Street. We broke a record that year, temperature wise. It was seventy two or seventy three degrees. It was wow. unbelievable. And we started the parade. I was with the 69th Regiment, who's been there every year for us, except for the year they were deployed to Iraq. I read that. And we started marching up North Division Street, and we made that turn past Dr. McGurdy's office, and there was no more ground to be seen. It was nothing but people. I, I'd never forget it, because I almost had trouble playing. I said, look at this. Streets were packed. Streets wow. were packed. Concert was sold out. We had a phenomenal evening. It was oh, just, it man. was great. And we stuck with that format early parade. By the way, uh, uh, Colonel Pat Garvey, who was the Grand Marshal in our second year, at that time was a comment on Camp Smith, was helpful in getting us lights so that it was getting, you know, getting dark, mm -hmm. 6, 15, 6 30, but the lights would light up, you know, especially Broad Street where, we, where they were recording the parade. Um, and we, we maintained that format until 19, uh, until 1999. So 1990, 1999, we had the parade and the show. And the shows were phenomenal. Yeah. The first five shows were all sellouts. After uh, Mary O'Dowd and the Clan, we had the Wolf Tones two years in a row. We had Cherished Ladies two years in a row. All sellouts. Uh, we were able to make money on it to pay for the parade. That was the whole intent. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely. And the next few years, we never lost money, but the, the, the <laughs> next to last year or two, we were breaking even, and we're all scratching our heads yeah. saying, this is really not our business. Was it getting any easier? Mm. Um, and then uh, in the year 2000, um, it was an opportunity. We didn't know what to do because St. Patrick's Day was on a Sunday, I guess. Mm, yep. or it, it, the calendar it didn't work out, and we decided to have a halfway to St. Patrick's Parade in September. Um, novel idea, which did not work out real well, but the following year uh, is when we decided, okay, now we can play. The bands we had knew the parade route. Mm. They liked the parade route that because makes... it started, ended close, only a half mile long, and we had no problem attracting bands then on the Saturday. And it's been on the Saturday ever since. That's what, then we instituted the mass. Because uh, I really wanted to, uh, I was so happy and so thrilled to be part of what was going on in New York City. I wanted to import that into sure. Peekskill oh, and use that as a model. And it really has been yeah. a great thing. Yeah, and you should have been there when we uh, kind of suggested having a mass before the parade. You got a whole bunch of Irish American Catholics, <laughs> AOH. Who's going to say no to that? You know, they head to it. So, uh, but the mass has turned it to be quite, uh, quite a show. Uh, I don't want to make make the mass no. sound any less relevant. The mass is important. It's the nucleus, but it became a place where we could uh, <coughs> play our music, um, and we've been able to draw quite a few people, especially with the support of the AOH, to the mass. And that's a, that's the way we like to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yes, uh, start off reverently and then go out and have a parade to celebrate what the day's all about, which is all about St. here. St. Patrick. Well, St. Patrick, at, which who's the patron saint of the Archdiocese, but also um, it's important to recognize contributions of uh, Irish Americans. Yeah, which, and we, which speaking we of which is the AOH. Talk yes. about that. Yeah. Well, the Ancient Order of Hibernians is certainly one of the oldest fraternal organizations in the country, uh, of which I'm a proud member, AOH Division 18 here. So, and, and then also we have uh, Huston Valley Irish Fest that, that Dan Denny started years ago. So these are three very active Irish American organizations, and we try to work closely because it's, it makes more sense to do these things in synergy. Um, that help each other out. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it gets, uh, especially when it comes to finances, it, can, it gets to be tough. Well, that's it. And yeah. so we're always fundraising. These, yeah. How do you get these kids involved now? What, what do you, what could you say to tell these kids? You know, come on board, help out. You know, that's a great question. Victor, we want them to be part of it. If they're part of it and they see we're having fun and we have yeah, uh, some new blood, you know, coming on now, uh, not the least of my daughters, it's Sophia. I, I shouldn't start mentioning the names <laughs> because I'm going to get somebody that's young that's not there or vice versa or some of the, the older ones. But, you know, uh, all, we're welcoming open arms to everybody because we can all use help. And I think once, once they're involved, they see it can be fun. And it's, a, it's a great outlet um, and it's a great... It's something also I think in society is missing these days because of these darn things. So uh, we try to meet face to face and we do go out and we socialize and we do have fun, but we do it for a purpose. And if it's not fundraising, it's, it's that, then to conduct a parade, conduct a mass yes. uh, and to do other things. And, and we, we work hard and try and give back to the community in, in other aspects too. So they were doing the, um, the raffle. That mm. was one way to raise some money. Yes. Yep. Uh, can we still buy tickets? Uh, of course. Yes, of course. 
All right. How would Don't ask me how right, right. now. I have, okay. to, I have to think about that. All right. uh, so, certainly, we have a website. Yes. You can, go on, so you, talk you can about Google the that. Yeah, the Peace School St. Patrick's Parade. Okay. So it's on there. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not sure if you can buy tickets online there, so you stump yeah. me on or that. Find but there's always somebody way. To, yeah. Okay. Because yep. you could still get a ticket. Yes. And then not, they not, also not for the dinner this Saturday. That's sold out. But oh, there's, okay. other, there's other things that are involved. Uh, we're always willing to take the money. We just have to figure out a legal yeah. way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> What about they had a, um, a coupon? A, a oh, yeah, coupon the coupon book. book. I'm very yeah. proud to say my daughter Nikki kind of spearheaded that yeah, along that with the Liz Marks and, uh, and Maggie Guinan. They got out there, and it was, it was successful. I, yes, I agree it was a great idea. Yeah. Uh, and they, they really made it look attractive, and they sold it. quite a few. And, in fact, they had gotten, I'm not mistaken, they had gotten... Uh, 100 or 200, they duplicated the order and got rid of most of those. I shouldn't oh, say get rid of them, they sold them. Yeah. But anybody spends 20 bucks on this. You're making mo money back on easily it. Easily within days. If you just use the coupons, it's great. So that was one of the f fundraising things. And there are, there's are. been quite a few other things. We've had guest bartenders, especially when we had the quiet man. Then we did it down at the Central. They've had some painting things. So I would encourage anybody, encourage everybody, go check out the website. You mm -hmm. can find it by Googling it. And there's all kinds of activities going yeah. on because we are we do something year round. Yeah. This, we don't pack yeah. up. Yeah, as soon as it's over, you start. We start planning next for next year, yeah. you know, and, and one of the important meetings is right after that because th no matter how hard you try, you're dealing with humans, there's going to be some things that don't no. go as yeah. you want. You want to, you want to. Let's talk about it now. You yeah, know. you want to remember that. You want to record that so we can address it to make yeah. it better for next yeah. year. You know. Well, I have a garden and every year I learn something new. I've been mm -hmm. doing this garden for almost 20 years now and you know, I had the cucumbers up front, but they only lasted two months because it had all day sun, but I got a ton of cucumbers. So I decided to put the cucumbers in the back. There you go. <laughs> they lasted all year, but I didn't get any cucumbers. So oh, that's funny. <laughs> so I'm putting them back in the front uh, this year and get my, you know, early stock of cucumbers and then that's it, whatever. Maybe I'll grow some more, but uh, S hey, you save, learned something. Save me a couple, will you? I will. I love cucumbers. Me too. But you learn something new every year, and that's oh yeah, that's ab what you absolutely. Gotta... And you get in my line of work, you stick your neck out. Uh, luckily, for me, but most of the time it seems to work. But there's sometimes that more. Often, sometimes I say, I'll never do that again. Yeah. Then I have to remember that never to do that, do that again. That's it. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so you're excited about this year? Oh yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's. Uh, um, I, I really am. It's. Uh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't get old, yeah. except for. That are physically demanding they prayed in New York City. Now I'm going to march again. I'll march this year with the uh, regimental headquarters for the 69th. But all the everything around it, doing this is fun. Doing this is it's exciting. Yes. Um, getting promoting. involved, in promoting, and, yeah. and getting involved with in the parade. I can't wait to for that know. day. It's exciting. Um, I can't wait to be with uh, our Grand Marshal George Pataki and the yeah. aides. Yeah. Uh, the night before, we have what we call the Grand Marshal tour, where we do go around and 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 support the. Uh, institutions that have supported us. The pub, pub crawl. You call it a pub crawl, we call it a grand marshal installation. Okay. okay? We Irish are a little, little classier. Um, but that is, it's a glorified pub crawl. No, okay. No doubt. But these restaurants have all taken out ads. That's right. And they've it, all supported us, so we take this night to go to thank them. Right. And we have a bunch of people that go in, and some people, is, there's probably a list of seven or eight of them, uh, and that'll be out, out there. You'll, you'll see that published. Um, and some people, Leapfrog, they'll, they'll go to place one and four and seven, whatever. You pick yeah. and choose what you want. Uh, and we'll wind up at the Elks Club where we'll unveil the uh, Grand Marshal's uh, plaque again. You and know, what date is that now? That's going to be the night before the parade, oh, okay. March 8th. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, so, so we try not to get go, involved in we that. We try not to go too late, make sure everybody's no. uh, in, right. in prime shape for the next day's events. All right, we can't not mention Chuck McGrill. Uh, Chuck's the best. All right. He's the best with a quiet man. Great, great uh, man. And he, he'll be here. We all miss that. Uh, and, and he does so much that people don't even realize he does behind the scenes. He's never looking to be stroked. But uh, he was a grand marshal one year. And, uh, yeah, the 25th, uh, 25th year he did it, right? Okay. I was, uh, you're better than I was. I'd have to, I'd have to go to my <laughs> gyp, uh, gyp notes, but that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. And Chuck is with me on the St. Pat Patrick's Day in New York City. We just have a great time together. You uh, had a great story. Tell that story. You want me to tell that story quickly, yes. how Chuck got involved? Yeah. Chuck was driving me down to the cathedral. <laughs> I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Okay. And uh, um, we got there, and the cops were blocking stuff off, and we were running late. And luckily, Liam Murphy's there. Liam Murphy is pretty well known in our community. And he's uh, chief of protocol for the parade at the cathedral. And uh, 
I said, I got to get out. What are we going to do? We're going to do Chuck. And Liam says, I'll take care of Chuck. You, you go with the regiment. You do your thing. I'll take care of it. I said, Liam, do me a favor. Just make sure Chuck gets inside the church, please. Just make sure he gets inside the cathedral. I don't want to see him stuck out there. He'll, we'll never do this again. <laughs> Liam says, I'll take care. I'll take care of him. So that for those that know Liam, they should not be surprised that I, as I was marching up the center aisle of Grand Central, I'm looking up and I see, I see a bald head. I see a, I see a, I should say a, a light gleaming off this bald head. And I'm going, I'm say that looks like Chuck. And I'm, I'm sweating a bit and it's tough to see from that distance. I'm getting closer and closer. I had to re remind myself to keep playing. And sure enough, there was Chuck standing there like he was eight feet tall with a sash saying cathedral in the sanctuary, no less. Oh, Proud as could be, and he's been there every year since. Oh, so Liam didn't only just get him at the cathedral, put him right in the sacristy. So <laughs> Liam knows how to get people on the committee and find a way to make them stay. Yeah. So he's been there yeah, ever ever since. Oh, and that's uh, great. Pretty funny. Uh, Joe had a question. Um, where did the kilt originate? Uh, where did pants originate? Yeah. Well, the kilt is probably older, or a form of a kilt, okay. certainly older. If you look at ancient pictures and everything, they were just wearing garbs. They were just, okay. okay. Um, the kilt itself originated, uh, the kilt as we know it, originated uh, in the UK. Okay. The British government, they would say, okay, well, when they had these groups of playing, bands playing, bagpipes and drums, it was, it was a clan or a regiment. And the way they were, one of the ways they were to be identified is particular patterns. Now, you get a, a, a plaid, is any, any color is the same up and down mm -hmm. as, the, as it is horizontal. That's a plaid. A tartan is a particular plaid. So what they did in, in the regiments, they would designate certain tartans, like the Black Watch, uh, the, the, you know, different for the different regiments. Uh, the Scots Guards had the Royal Stuart. Uh, if they were t you know, attached to this or attached to that, that's what they would wear. The Irish typically had solid colors. Until about probably 50, 60 years ago, did they start having tartans here. The police pipe band in New York City is one of the oldest. They wear solid blue. But when the fire department band started in 1966, and by the way, I was very proud to be the instructor for the fire department band from, awesome. from 1973 until I was elected to the council here in Peekskill in 1996. Fabulous fraternity. Excellent. But they designed their own tartan. Uh, and the colors each represent something, like the white represents the FDNY officers, the red, the blood that shed, the blue, the, the fraternity. Uh, so each of those colors meant something. Yeah. West Point designed their own tartan. So next thing, that became something here in this country, and as well as Ireland, where each group would design their own tartan. So I started a pipe band in 1989 that was sponsored by the FBI. We were known as the FBI Pipe Band. And I wanted something unique. I wanted the red, white, and blue colors of our American yeah, flag. Right. And basically, idea. I designed that kilt that I wear uh, on St. Patrick's Day, and the kilt that I'm seeing around most frequently is the red, white, and blue colors of our flag. And that's what I wanted to do for the oh, FBI pipe band. Yeah. Joe, thanks so much. Really appreciate well, my it. My pleasure. I, right. Victor, I was excited great. when you asked me. Yeah, I'm, Don't tell me it's over already. i got so much more to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank Sophia Ferroni for making the connection. She told me to call Sue Sheridan, then Sheridan got a hold of you. I'm glad you mentioned Sue's name. She deserves a tremendous amount of uh, gratitude for the job she's doing as yeah. the chairman. We've been lucky for the chairmen we've had of this committee. The, the first chairman was uh, Dan Caffrey, okay. and Pat Garvey, Jack Murphy, Bill Powers, Sue Sheridan. Um, they just got better and better as they went along. Yeah. Sue does it. She does it, yoman's it, work. That, without them, it, this wouldn't be happening. That, that's right. So, it, that's, so we, we need all so that support. Much for yep. you guys. I'm glad you mentioned that. All right. Victor. You're the best. Thanks, yeah, Joe. Thanks, Victor. All right. My pleasure. All right. Good luck with a great year. And uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. Definitely go to the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And if you want, get involved. Join the AOH. Join the committee and uh, get involved. Thanks for watching.